Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to Great Artists Steel. My name's Ian Ellis and I'm going to go, go for uh, the next video on, on colour perception. Um, perhaps the most important thing for, before you start mixing is to identify a colour you want to mix, um, which is the, it's just not easy to learn. It's a skill that uh, um, takes years and you've got to start practising it. And we're going to give you a little test. What colour is that and how would you call it? What colour would you call that? If you're going to describe it to somebody and you wanted to mix it, well, what colours would you use? It's not easy, is it? I mean, you're just looking at that one. And then if I cover that one up so you can look at the next one. What colour would we call that one? It's got a bit of colour with it. It's a grey, but what kind of grey? What colour would you mix grey to to get that? And the final one, no, not the final one, the third one, we've got the another colour. What would you call that colour? What words would you use to describe it? This is a... And finally, got that one. That's a bit easier. What would you call that? Anyway, if I show them all all four of them and then I show all the colours all the hues those four belong to four of those colours so which four have we used within that <clears throat> now the first one you could say it would perhaps but a lot of you perhaps had a green but the if you looked at my mixing yellow video you'll find when you darken yellow it looks green um, yellow itself is causing problems. The word yellow, um, when we darken it, 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 it turns, appears to turn to a green, so it changes its colour. But it's not really changing. If we, call that, if we call the yellow a different name, if we call it yellow green or something, or light green, when it goes, when, if it goes green when we darken it, it wouldn't bother us too much. But uh, that's the sh that was just, all I did was just put black with lemon yellow for that. Um, the next one. Um, if one of the blues I used there, I, I used one of the blues there. Which blue would you say you'd use for those? And uh, I'll let you in. Uh, it, a lot of people will say the ultramarine blue, and it's actually used a very cold blue. I use this the cerulean blue. It looks a bit colder. And this one as well. Um, which colours? Are, I'll, I'll let you in on the secret. It was one of the reds and the violets. It could be one of those. Which one? And I've narrowed it down for you. Which of those colours do you think it is? A lot of people will go for this kind of colour. and uh, But I used, it was that colour. It was a cadmium red and I greyed it. Put, put a black and white with it and made it grey. This one's a bit easier, but it still changes its colour. Again, I've got a really dark mauve purple shade on the, I used here to put white, just to put white with it. Now, when you're adding uh, white with something, um, to a hue like that, is we call it a name. It, if you can use a, uh, describe it in a name, it makes it easier to kind of file color in your head. Um, I've got these four ways of identifying the color. The first one, I just put in black with the yellow. As I, as I've shown you in other videos, you can get the same color if you use two colors either side. So if I use an orange and a green, I'd end up getting that. But that, with that one, I actually added black just to keep it simple. And when we add black to the hue, this is the hue, these are all the hues, what we call, and these hues are the ones we use to identify all colours. So all these colours here belong to one of these hues. So they have said that's a lemon yellow shade. Uh, this one, it was a swirling blue tone, because tone is the colour we use when we add a grey to the hue, shade when we add black. And this one's a tint using just white with that. The red I've got here looks like a purple because it's grey. It's actually the, a tone as well. Not quite as grey as that one, but it's a, a tone. Now, as you can see, it's very difficult to identify these colours. And the biggest problem is when we neutralise the colours, when we make the colours um, take the t intensity away from the colour. And what we do when we neutralise the colour, adding white or black or grey or to the colour, we end up changing the, the warmth of the colour. So if you're using a, a cold colour like a cerulean blue, um, being, I mean, when we say warm and cold, it's like um, 
ice being the coldest color, maybe blue green, and I think that's why a lot of people think about color. Fire being warm, um, so the very hot colors of vermilion, and the opposite color, color of that is the cerulean blue, which is a cold color. But when we neutralize a color by adding a gray to it, what happens? It appears warmer. And that's where the problem starts. So uh, a lot of people would say that color was more ultramarine blue because it appears warmer. Um, so it's a, so the mis, mis uh, understanding of what we're actually looking at takes place because of the warmth has changed. So you've got to be aware of things like, like this color as well because it's it's gone colder when we added the gray to that. Uh, people are assuming it's more of a purple over here. And, and that's perhaps sort of thing. Uh, most common mistakes people make and it's to do with the idea of the warm and cool. Uh, now, um, once you've got the idea of each colour being um, a tint of a hue or a shade of a hue or a tone of a hue, we then can kind of measure the colours and how much um, each hue, for instance, how much red, yellow and blue are in these colours is a way of measuring them. Uh, we identify the colour by how much, uh, say that's got more yellow and blue in it, um, no red. But then some, all these colours will be mixed with just maybe the two. We start adding three. We say there were three different three colours in these colours because of bits of blue in it, bits of red, bits of yellow within that. Value is quite simple. If I took a black and white photograph of those four colours, or black and white photograph of all those, you will see the value, the light and dark. Um, high value being light and um, low value being dark. Okay, So that's quite a dark value um, within that. Now, a way of measuring the, uh, understanding the saturation is perhaps the hardest one to get your head round, I think, because um, we're looking, I've got to create a little chart here, which is uh, quite complex, but it starts off with the hue being these, one of these colours, as that, that's hue being the fully saturated colour, um, and then we, uh, if we start adding white over this side, which is the, over that side down to white, we call them the tints. Um, as I said over here, and then if we add black that side, we get the shades, and then we have the different and um, the millions of different greys. I've only put three down there. I've got a neutral grey, mid grey, dark grey, and a light grey, and then again it's adding the hue, different proportions of the hue to that, and you'll end up with the, a big range of what we call tones in the middle, um, and there's loads of them. Um, Perhaps one of the reasons why I think uh, the word tone has changed meaning, because when we look at a colour we ask what tone is it, because most of the time we're looking at colour in nature, it will be a tone rather than a shade or a tint or a hue, and I think that's taken over the word value a little bit, so, but I think if we can keep things clear and talk about uh, how dark we talk, when we talk about light, we're talking about the value, and tone just being a name for the actual colour when I, and grey's added to it. Now, just to help cement this for you, I'm just going to do a quick mixing of lemon yellow. I'm gonna put my lemon yellow down here and then go through all the mixing with you to show you, show you an example. Remember, this is not two color mixing, remember. I'm using, because it's so complex, I'm just using black and white and gray to help me identify the colors. But one advantage of two color mixing is that when you, when you've, if you know what this color is, is this kind of, it's a kind of blue green, um, you can mix it with black, but if you don't know what colour it is, if you've got two colour mixing, you perhaps can find it by adding two colours either side. So you can end up mixing, say, a, um, a Viridian Green with a Violet or something like that, and you'll find it by the mix, by just trial and error, by using your eye to see when it moves towards that colour, which is an advantage of two colour mixing. Anyway, just back to the saturation, I'm just going to start with a Lemon Yellow as my top colour. Let me just find the chart again. I'm going to copy this chart, so I'm going to go for the hue. And remember, you can do this with all the colours, and I recommend I recommend you to do this because um, if you can identify what all these colours look like, it's a hell of a lot of work. But this is if you want to be a good painter, this is the sort of things you've got to do. You've got to start looking at what do the colours look like um, when you when you darken them. So I've got uh, white down the bottom, and I've got a little bit of white here, a um, bit more on that one, but uh, and then <clears throat> bits, not so much white as it moves up towards the tints, and then I've got the black at the other side, bits of black going up, a bit more black on that one, towards the yellow, 
And then I've got the greys. Um, a bit more white in these two, not so much. I'm being a bit careful with the black, black being much stronger than the white, so I'm just going to now go for a dark mid grey. Looks a little bit, that looks a bit more like a light grey to me, but I'm going to mix this one. A bit more black in that. And then the dark grey, one in between, and I'll just lighten that one a little bit more. So I've got my mid grey sli slightly, uh, the dark grey will get dark on this one a bit more. So I've got really one, two, three. That's perhaps that's a little bit too light. It's just not, I want to get something in between really. This one can come over there a bit more. And I want a nice movement between the two. So that's my light gray. Mid gray, a little bit darker. Darken this one a bit more, so very dark gray here. And then in between, that's more like it. Mid grey is still quite dark compared to there, so I'm getting those killers. And I've got the now I'm going to go keep my brush really clean, my, my knife really clean. Remember, knife so much so quicker to use when you're using um, paint, so so easy to clean when you're mixing paint. I'm just using quite a lot. That's kind of a, I call that a rich, rich tint. Um, Mid tint, using the, just to keep it really simple, just do, th and a light tint of yellow, that in white. They're just whites added to it. Nice movement down towards the white. And I can do the same with the yellow for the black shades. A bit darker. Um, use that one. That's gone too dark. See, black, <laughs> you can see how heavy black is. and. Uh, all my experience of painting, and I've just kind of done that, but trying to keep it the same intensity as the color over the t over this side, so it looks the same amount of uh, color. Then I'm going to go for the dark yellow. Now the black's really taking over. That's why black's so difficult to use. That's why it's recommended not to use when you're mixing. But for this kind of exercise, yeah, I recommend you to use it because it's a lot of uh, work. Still think that's just a little bit too. That's more like it. I get a nice dark, rich color of the dark shade of lemon yellow. Now, uh, putting the lemon yellow down, I've got three different grays there. And uh, remember, all I've done so far is I've mixed the black with the yellow to create the shades. I've created the white with the yellow to get the tints, and I've made the neutral colors. Now I'm gonna try and get the same level of saturation for each level of the gray. So it's the same, same amount of yellow, so I've got three little bits of yellow up there. Three across here. And not much yellow down here. Got too much yellow in that one. Now just a bit of the light grey up here, so make the more light grey in the mid one. They're lovely killers. You can see the killers coming down. Just a little bit more grey with that, just a little bit more change. Trying to keep the same level of saturation as that. I mean just now coming down a lot of grey in this one. Almost just a hint of yellow in that. Like there's a hint of yellow in the white one. Um, still feel there's a little bit more yellow in that one. Just, just trying to judge this with my eye to see 
if that's got the same intensity as that and quite a difficult exercise to do. I've got more yellow in that one. So I'm trying to keep them the same level of, that's got white with that, that's got that. Now I'm gonna go for the mid gray. Just a tiny bit of gray. Um, I've got a bit too much in there, so I'm going the center one there. That looks pretty good. Remember, it's gonna go darker, but I still wanna keep it the same richness as how much um, yellow you're seeing coming through there. And then I'm gonna do the same with the bottom one, but only a bit of yellow in this. And then just a touch in that one. Should end up being a bit darker, but still with the same level of yellow coming through. Now the dark gray. Just pulling up lots of, just a bit of yellow in that one. A bit more yellow, that's done a bit too dark. Or has it, I think it's a bit more yellow with it. That still gives you the same level of saturation. And then just a little bit into that one. That should go a little bit darker than the, the other. Beautiful, yeah? So I've got um, yellow saturation, the shades and three tones and a tint. Just about on the same level of saturation. That looks a little bit more intense, The uh, that color. I'm just gonna, that, that color looks more intense than the other ones. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to identify the intensity, just increase that intensity in those a bit more, put more yellow at the top, just to make it, that's it, a bit more, so the richer. And this one as well. So that's more like it, they're all the same intensity. And, uh, Put my yellow back up there. So I've got the fully saturated lemon yellow. I've got a, a rich tones and tints and shade, it's a rich shade and a rich tint. Three tones in there, two rich mid tones coming down here, a mid, mid shade and a, a mid tint, and three um, t tones there of the, of the lemon yellow, the mid color, all about the same level of saturation. And then down to the dull. More dull colours. You see, there's a big level of change in light and dark in there as well. But the saturation level of the colours are the same. Meaning, there's the same amount of yellow coming out of that dark as there is the white, as in the grey. So, and so I would call all those levels. I'm trying to get them all the same level of saturation. This is the same level of saturation because it's zero. There's no yellow in it. It's the bottom level. And so, when you're measuring saturation, it's from the yellow, the intense colour, to the zero. It includes the greys, white, and black. And then you see that level. Obviously, you can do many more levels. I actually ended up mixing an extra grey here. I should have only had three. I've got an extra grey, but I used that one there. I've got five, one. I got should only have four greys. So. But what I'm looking at is just a good exercise I could do with all the colours. And it will help you be able to do this kind of exercise. If you can do this, see what our colours look like. You see how green everything looks, the yellow. Um, what happened? What do all, how do all the other colours look? You can write them down, put a name next to it. This is the saturation movement of lemon yellow. You can do that with every single colour. Loads of work. <laughs> but you'll learn. It will be, it's great fun just seeing what the colours look like when doing that. And if you love your mixing as much as I do, you'll enjoy it. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you again. Bye for now.